Hey kids, I'm back with reading What Was the Gold Rush? Reading chapters three and four. Chapter three, Rushing West. By the time the news spread to the East Coast in 1848, it was almost winter again. Snow and cold weather made it much harder to travel across the country to California. So people, thousands of them, waited until the spring of 1849. By then, there would be grass growing on the plains to feed their animals on the trip west. Soldiers deserted the army, sailors left their ships, teachers, lawyers, farmers, blacksmiths, and shopkeepers quit their jobs. Most were unmarried men. Those men who were married usually went alone. For one thing, they couldn't afford to bring their families. And then, and they thought life in the gold country would be too hard on women and children. Besides, most men didn't expect to stay in California for long. They expected to strike gold and return home rich. There were three ways to get to California from the eastern United States. Each way was hard and dangerous. In 1848 and 1849, about 41,000 people went by sea in 697 ships. About 48,000 went over land. Going over land was the cheapest way. To stay safe, travelers formed groups called wagon trains. Trails were rugged, rugged, excuse me. So wagons pulled by oxen went slowly. If you walked, you could keep up with the wagons, but your shoes wore out fast and your feet would get awfully sore. Wagons crossed rivers, prairies, deserts, and steep mountains on the trip. West of the Ohio, west of Ohio, the country was mostly unsettled. There were no people or houses for many miles around. It took seven months to get to California from East Coast cities such as New York. Two other major starting points were of the Missouri cities of St. Joseph and Independence. From the Midwest, the trip was about 2,000 miles long and took five months. Oregon and California, the Oregon, California, and Santa Fe trails were the most popular wagon routes to the west. So the Oregon Trail, the dark line, California Trail, the dotted line, and the Santa Fe Trail, the dashed line from the Midwest. This is the Midwest. Most overland travelers made it to California if they stayed on schedule, but had to leave Missouri by the end of April in order to make it through the Sierra Nevada mountains before the winter came. Otherwise, they might get trapped in the snow. Many overlanders face plenty of problems, like accidents and snake bites, or running out of food and water, or broken wagons and injured oxen. Cholera was caused by drinking water polluted by bacteria. It killed 1,500 travelers in 1849. Prospectors who could afford it went to California by sea. They paid fares of $200 to $1,000. Going by ship was, the fast, was faster than traveling by wagon train. There were two main sea routes from the East Coast. Both usually sailed southward on the Atlantic Ocean from New York or Boston. The longer route went around Cape Horn. It's here. They went from here all the way to there. Um, that's the southern tip of South America. From there, ships sailed north on the Pacific Ocean to San Francisco. This route was almost 15,000 miles long. It usually took five or six months to complete the journey. Fast clipper ships, like the Flying Cloud, could make the trip in three months, but there weren't enough of them to take everyone who wanted to go. The shorter route, only 5,300 miles, went down the Atlantic coastline only as far as the Isthma of Panama. The Isthma was a 50 mile wide strip of land connecting North America and South America. The east coast of Panama is on the Atlantic Ocean. This is the Isthma of Panama right there. Little, what did they say, 50 mile strip of land? Yeah. And then on the west side, West Coast is the Pacific. There we go. And we have a little extra insert, the Panama Canal. 
1855, a railroad was built across the Isthmus of Panama. Then, in 1880, France began digging a can canal across the Isthmus. The French eventually ran out of money and stopped. In 1904, the United States, under President Theodore Roosevelt, took over the project. It took more than 10 years to complete the canal. There were many problems during construction, such as landslides, heavy rains, thick jungles, accidents, and disease. More than 27,000 workers died in 34 years, in the 34 years of building the canal. They finished, the, the finished canal was 52 miles long. It still connects the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans today. The SS Ancon was the first ship to pass through the canal in 1914. Today, about 40 ships take the three-hour trip through the canal every day. Panama is widening, widening the canal so that bigger ships can start using it in 2014. So it's already happening. So Panama is a very little country in South America, and they kind of cut a little hole in it, made it a little bigger so that boats could go through. So it'd be faster to kind of cut through here on this dotted line instead of going all the way across the dashed line. There we go. At the Isthma, passengers got off the ships. They went 40 miles up Panama's Charges River in wooden canoes. Then they traveled on mules through a jungle to Panama City on the Pacific side. There were wild animals such as alligators and monkeys in the jungle. Panama is near the equator. It is hot and humid. Some travelers caught disease such as malaria and yellow fever from mosquitoes. If all went well, the trip across the Isthmus only took six weeks. However, prospectors might have to wait weeks in Panama City before a ship would arrive that was bound for San Francisco. Today, traveling by ship often means enjoying a floating vacation, but life abroad, a, life aboard a ship in the 1840s and 1850s was very different. The food had bugs and mold. The drinking water wasn't always clean. Sometimes ships ran out of both before the trip was over. There were rats on board. If passengers were injured or sick, they were on their own. There might not be a doctor to help them. There were terrible storms, especially near Cape Horn. Some ships sank. Still, ships left for California almost every day in 1849. Shipping companies advertise all around the world for passengers. This fueled gold fever in faraway places such as China, Australia, and Europe. But the ads didn't mention the problems passengers was, would face on the voyage. This is an ad. Many prospectors kept diaries and sent letters home. A man named S. Schufelt, who sailed from New York to California in 1849, wrote in a letter to his cousin, I have left those that I love as my own life behind and risked everything and endured many hardships to get here. And I want to make enough to live easier and do some good with it before I return. Like all 49ers, he hoped his struggles would pay off in gold. And that's that.